<laughs> no, no, I'm serious. You know, and uh, when I was in my dressing room, it was talking about what's that famous jazz club? The group of them, right? the They had all the great jazz. And before I ever thought I would ever come to New York, and they always told us, if you never go to New York, buddy, you'll never make it. So I said, oh, well, I got to figure out what the fuck to do to get to New York. Great high bucks, man. I said that again. You from Chicago? Shut up! Chicago! Yeah! We home! Yeah, yeah. Well, we here, we here, shut up! All right, all right, all right. The enemy in. But anyway, <laughs> some, thank you. But some of y'all didn't know who the fuck Buddy Guy was until the British started playing blues. Yeah. Yeah. You did not know who Buddy Water was until the British started playing blues. Now, if you don't want me to tell the truth, I know y'all got elections here tonight, but that's why I'm not a politician, because I don't know how to lie. <laughs> and, but I do know if you want to be a great politician, you got to be a big liar. <laughs> you may not like what I'm saying, but like I say, I'll tell you the truth. Talk to you, buddy. I know a lot of politicians. Some of them owe me money now for playing. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't gonna call the name, but one of them had me playing in the middle of the streets in Chicago and gave me a check this long. And guess what the check had? Still hanging in my fucking office, man. I went to the bank and they said, where is he? Yeah. So now you know why I got to keep the blues. Yeah. And this is what happened all my life. But to say the truth, there was a television show called Shindy in the 60s. And Mick Jagger and the Rolling Stones were getting bigger than bubblegum. And they were trying to get them to do the shindig. And Mick Jagger said, I'll do shindig if you let me bring muddy waters. And white America said, who in the fuck is that? <laughs> Now you can laugh, but I'm telling you the truth. And I'm laying there saying, oh shit, I, I didn't know that. And they agreed, and, and that's the first time I saw Mother's face on television. They brought it home. How they were, and they under the rest of them. And I'm telling you that, I think that the cause I'm standing before you tonight, without the British, White America didn't know who a lot of great black musicians were. Oh, yeah, thank you. Sonny Johnson, man. But this is one person I'm talking about here. Chess Records. Say that again. Chess. Who? Chess Records. Chess Records. Chess Records didn't do that. The British did. So. <laughs> This record was like saying, I got it made. I got a little water, muddy water, and how to whoop. I don't give a fuck about nobody else in the world. But the, the British was receiving Jack Dupree and uh, all these great blues players no longer with us, and they was confident. So when they start playing and they come back here, yeah, chess come to me. They say, excuse my language, they say, come here, motherfucker, you had this all the time. And we didn't know what the fuck was going on. The British are telling me, you are the one playing this strap. And uh, Clapton, Jeff Beck, Jimmy Page looked at me and said, I ain't no strap to play blues until I saw you. along with Jimmy Hendrix, and he was here. Yes. Wait a minute, now let me fix that. He was playing that special effects here, and everybody was like saying, what the fuck is that? <laughs> but after he left that and went to England, the British said, bring it on. <laughs> and he come back here to one of the biggest, greatest guitar players here on the back. 
Yeah. Now let me show you now. Let me show you now. Look at a friend of mine. And especially he was not, he had a group called Cream. Yep. And when he had a group called Cream, he was playing like this. <laughs> Thank you. 